Yo, what's going on everybody? This is Brendan Mushi, and today I'm coming at you guys with a Leo White fan guide. Okay, look, I know everybody expects me to make a bunch of gorilla jokes, but you know what, Leo means? This is your video. So don't listen to insults from these chip players and Zato players, even myself calling myself out here. People who don't understand you, King. So today is your day, and besides, Thinking is pretty overrated anyway. Leo is for aggressive players who want a nice balance between an oppressive mix-up game when on the offensive, coupled with decent pokes and projectiles in the neutral. Leo has the ability to enter Brynhildr stance, also referred to as backturn stance, and it is when he is pressuring the opponent in this stance up close when Leo is at his scariest, as he has access to a plethora of mix-ups. This is why Leo's strengths are his amazing mix-ups and pressure, as well as his high damage. His cons are his low mobility, how he can struggle to get going, and how much he has to take risks in order to get started or in regards to his mix-up choices. So we're going to start this guide off with the king here by talking about our game plan. So ideally, Leo wants to be up close in the opponent's face where he can mix them up between a strike and throw in the normal stance, or even better, overheads, lows, side switch, and command grabs in the back turn stance. More on that later. Leo's win condition is essentially getting close to the opponent while in back turn stance. If you see this nigga's lats, you know you're in trouble. As soon as you see some shoulder blades on this man, it's about to be a problem. If Leo is able to get into the back turn stance next to the opponent, he has an access to a plethora of mix-up options that the opponent is going to hate dealing with. Opponents can attempt to mitigate this by countering or punishing any of Leo's attempts to get close or get into the back turn stance. To further explain this, let's go over which of Leo's moves put him in the back turn stance. So the moves that put Leo in the back turn stance would be his normal throw, quarter circle forward heavy, which is also called the run through. It's a move where Leo will run a set distance with an attack at the end. However, he'll only enter the back turn stance if he actually passes through the opponent. So it requires him to be a little bit closer to them, so that way he'll actually have enough distance to run through them to the other side. If he successfully makes it to that side, he'll enter the back turn stance, but he's vulnerable during this run and can be thrown out of it, so aware opponents won't allow him to get away with that. And the other way in which he's able to get into the back turn stance is his quarter circle back slash move. If you perform this move and you hold the slash button, Leia will be in the back turn stance. However, if you do this move in neutral and you put yourself in back turn stance at a distance, you're not really doing yourself that many favors because it's more powerful when you're in the opponent's face and able to mix them up. Doing it at a distance when you're in neutral doesn't really help you as much, it's not as powerful. While run through can certainly work, you just have to make sure that you're unpredictable with it so that the opponent doesn't throw you out of it. So this is where Leo players have to adapt their neutral to really earn their way in. In terms of movement, Leo is pretty limited, and this is definitely one of his weaknesses. Instead of a run, he has a dash like Giovanna, but it's way slower. He doesn't have two air dashes, or triple jumps, or flight, or any of that crazy stuff. He's simple, straight and to the point. So outside of air dashing in with a jump heavy, which will get you in and give you a full combo on hit, and you'll get a mix up between a throw or a strike on block, which is great, Leo's grounded game will revolve around him using far slash as a poke. Leo, like every character, can chain his slash buttons into his heavy slash buttons, but Leo's unique in that he can actually reverse chain his heavy slash back into his slash buttons, and he can do it repeatedly as many times as he wants until he's pushed out of range and can no longer do it. And this is very important actually to his game. What's cool about this is that Leo can delay the timings on the slash and heavy slash to create these small gaps in the pressure in hopes that it will catch his opponent. So he can kind of create a little bit of a mix up where am I going to run through you to the other side and get that back turn that I so desperately, desperately want? Or am I gonna do my far slash button and you think I'm gonna cancel it into the run through so you input a throw to throw me out of the run through, but I actually do a delayed heavy slash and it counter hits your throw. So it's not perfect, but it is something that you can incorporate into your game to be a little bit less predictable and keep your opponent on their toes. On hit, slash into heavy into slash can combo into quarter circle forward slash which will give you a soft knockdown. If it hits, you should have a little bit of time to be able to run up and hit some follow up attacks on their wake up. Just be careful of doing quarter circle forward slash too close to the opponent on block as it is punished by a lot of characters jabs. So be sure to hit slash heavy slash slash heavy slash enough to push yourself back to a safe distance before doing it on block. So just to show you an example of keeping myself safe, slash, heavy slash, slash, heavy slash, psych run through. This is how you play this character, bitch. 
Leo's far slash and heavy slash buttons can be held to enter a guard point state. In this state, Leo will block any mid or high attacks. He'll also block supers and red and yellow roman cancels, but he cannot defend against lows, throws, or bursts in this stance. He can slowly walk left and right, but cannot dash, jump, or input specials until he leaves the mode. At any point, Leo can release the held buttons to exit this stance. If Leo held a slash, he can press H to initiate an attack. Same goes for H, but in reverse. If he was holding H, he can press slash to initiate an attack. The idea is that while Leo is in this stance, he can parry an attack then quickly fire back, or should an opponent attempt to run up on him and punish it with a low or a grab, he can attack them while they're on their way to him preemptively. The attack that he does can be cancelled into special moves. 5k is also great in that it moves him forward and it's only minus one on block, which basically just means that it's very very safe to throw out and you won't get punished for it. You can chain it into forward kick, otherwise called 6k, and then cancel that forward kick into quarter circle forward slash. On hit, this will completely combo from start to finish. You can do 5k, 6k, quarter circle forward slash for a three hit combo. Now on block, if they block the 5k, when you chain into 6k, this will frame trap any mash attempts from your opponent. So if your opponent presses a jab or anything after your 5k, the 6k will counter hit them for a combo. This is great because it will incentivize people to not press any buttons after your 5k. And so if your opponent is just going to block after your 5k, which is only minus one, meaning it's extremely safe, that sets up the ability for you to tick throw off your 5k. And what do we get when we land a throw? That's right, back turn, let's go. 6P or forward plus punch is a great anti-air due to its upper body and vulnerability, but it can also be used as a counter poke for this very reason as well against enemy grounded pokes that hit above the waist. If you successfully counter a poke with it, you can cancel into run through giving you the back turn mix. So far, all of the Leo moves we've gone over are quarter circle inputs, but Leo also has a fireball done by charging back for a brief period of time and then pressing forward and slash or heavy slash. The slash one has faster startup and travels quickly. It will delete any single hit projectiles. The heavy one has longer startup but travels slow and does more hits allowing Leo to run behind it and for it to cover your approach. This fireball coupled with Roman cancel is especially dangerous in neutral in that it allows Leo to get in by covering his approach and it can even be used as a mix up tool after knockdowns to hold the opponent in place to allow you to run through for cross ups. If an opponent jumps at Leo you can anti air with forward punch or 6p which has upper body and vulnerability. 2H, otherwise known as Crouching Heavy, which is slower but has massive reward on counter hit, and 5P, uh, otherwise known as Standing Punch, is also good as well because it's extremely fast but has just a very like little reward. Of course, you can also use his DP as well, which is his second charge move. It's done by performing a charge down and then press up in a button. Some people will call it Flash Kick because that's the input for Guile's move, which is essentially the same thing. Due to being invulnerable to strikes, it can be used on wake up or in gaps in your opponent's pressure as a get off me tool. Just make sure that it doesn't get blocked by your opponent because if it does, you will be left in a counter hit state and you will take massive damage from them. But you can Roman cancel it on block to make yourself safe or Roman cancel it on hit to get yourself a combo. He can also use his super as a reversal in that it's invulnerable to strikes and throws and it's also used to tack on damage at the end of combos. Alright, so after all that, you guys finally ready to talk about back turn stance? I know you are. Let's talk about back turn stance. So maybe you landed a throw, or maybe the opponent got caught lacking and you hit him with a cheeky run through, or maybe you landed a sweep and you did the run through after that, maybe you roman cancelled and ran through after that, whatever the case may be, you were able to knock the opponent down, maybe it was a quarter circle back slash, and now we're here. We have the back turn, we're on top of the opponent, what do we do? What is the sauce that I've been looking for? So in back turn stance, Leo can walk left or right, he can't jump or block. Leo can cancel out of this stance by pressing down down. His dash becomes a lot faster, it can actually pass through the opponent making for cross up mix ups on the left and right. All of his normals change and he doesn't have any crouching versions or jumping versions since he can't jump. Back turn P can be used as an anti-air because it has some upper body and vulnerability properties. K is the low and it's very fast, it's literally unreactable and it's also plus on block. Slash is a mid that has a very chunky hitbox with like pretty much no hurt box so it basically beats everything. H is the overhead and it's also safe on block as well and it's extremely fast and hard to react to. D is a counter that counters highs, mids, lows, supers, YRCs, and reflects projectiles. I'm not kidding, none of that was a joke, it literally does all of those things. 
It used to parry burst before, but thank god it doesn't anymore. Unlike the guard point stance with his slash and heavy slash when you hold the button, he can actually use any of his specials while in this stance and cancel them from his buttons in this stance into those special moves. But using those special moves will end the stance. However, Leo gains access to new special moves and another super that can only be used in that stance. He gets a command grab for god knows what reason, a slow startup attack that guard crushes, which basically means that it makes him massively plus, which basically means that Leo gets to take another turn again. Which basically means you know have turn, I have turn, me plus, me press button. If you hold the attack button on either of these two attacks, it will actually allow Leo to stay in the back turn stance after the move has been performed so he can continue pressuring you with that stance. He also gains access to an incredibly fast super that throws a massive projectile across the screen that can be used to snipe opponents during low recovery moves they did on the other side of the screen, such as throwing a projectile themselves, and also to combo off of the counter and back turn stance. It can also be used to end combos in the back turn stance as well, as it'll cause an area shift in the corner. So once Leo gets you in the back turn stance, he can go for lows, he can go for overheads, he can go for command grabs, he can go for a side switch mix by dashing to the other side, and all of these options lead into good damage and oftentimes in the same situation or a wall break. Just like in the good old days of Xert and XX, in back turn stance Leo is actually able to completely Gatling all the way from P to K to S to H, he can Gatling completely in order. So it's up to you if you want to start with the low or if you want to start with the overhead, but your opponent better start guessing. And you can cancel any of these buttons into the command grab, which will scoop them up. And you can also dash to the other side, which means they'll have to switch their guard. It's really not hard at all. And if you want to end your combos with quarter circle back slash, that's probably a good idea because it'll give you a hard knockdown. And if you hold the slash button, that will keep you in that stance and you can continue dashing to the other side and decide, am I going to hit them with K for the low or H for the overhead and then go into the command grab at some point as well. And if at any point during this the opponent feels confident enough to mash, you can always just press D and you'll counter them. So next I want to talk about Leo's applications of meter. So Leo can utilize Roman Cancel to punish people's attempts to punish his run through. He can also Roman Cancel to give himself a free opportunity to run through behind you without you being able to stop him whatsoever. He can use Roman Cancel to make his DP safe on block. And he can also use Roman Cancel on his heavy fireball in order to cover his approach and also set up mix-ups on Oki. So we've gone over Leo's overview, his strengths, his weaknesses, a brief overview of his move set and what he does. Now I kind of want to talk about some tips or advice on how to beat Leo if you're playing against him. So again, Leo's biggest weakness is that he struggles with mobility and his range is decent but it's not like anything to write home about. So a lot of characters do have the ability to zone him out or keep him away because they have so much mobility that it's hard for them to chase him or they have so much range that he is, gets outranged and it's hard for him to get in on them. Make sure that if the Leo player isn't spacing their quarter circle forward slash properly that you punish it with a 5p or a 2p. Also because Leo's DP is a charge motion meaning he has to charge down briefly and then hit up. If Leo has recently blocked an overhead, he can no longer DP because in order to block an overhead, you have to switch your guard to back. So if he switched his guard to back, then that means that he isn't charging for a DP anymore. So if you jump in on a Leo and you hit him with a safe jump, for example, as soon as you hit him with that safe jump, in order for him to block that safe jump, if you run in for a throw or something like that, or run in for an attack, you know for a fact that he cannot DP you because he just blocked high. So always remember if a Leo has recently blocked high, he cannot DP for a little bit because he has to charge again. Once again, remember to throw Leo out of the run through. It doesn't matter if Leo is hitting you or you're blocking against Leo or Leo is in neutral. At any point, he can and will run through you. So it's always a good habit that even when you're getting comboed by Leo, even when you're blocking Leo, even when he's in neutral, you always want to keep in the back of your mind, what if you run throughs right now? As long as you're looking for it, you should be able to punish it. It's very hard to react to the command grab in his back turn stance. It's super annoying because the animation is very discreet, but it is reactable if you're looking for it. So you don't want to backdash too early because if you backdash as soon as possible, you will backdash and then your backdash will get punished by the command grab. Instead what you should do is you want to let him kind of travel towards you a little bit and then backdash the tail end and then you'll get a counter hit punish for massive damage. When Leo's in the back turn stance in front of you, always remember that the low is way faster than the overhead, so you typically want to at least try blocking low first and then maybe switch to the, the high block 
on a reaction or on a read when you feel that it's coming. So that's always a good practice. There are ways that Leo players can get around it, such as just not pressing anything and then pressing the low late. But again, you want to at least force the Leo to do stuff like that in the first place. I also recommend mashing after the overhead because the way for Leo to actually beat this option is for him to cancel into either the quarter circle forward slash to hit you for mashing or the quarter circle backslash, which will counter hit you and pop you up for a massive combo, which sucks. However, if he does either of those options and you don't mash, then he is giving you your turn back. So you're basically putting him in a 50-50 mix-up. Anytime you block the overhead, don't just block it and let him continue moving on with his pressure. I see a lot of people do this, and I've made this mistake before too. They'll block the overhead from Leo, and then they'll get scared, and they'll just continue to let Leo just keep doing slash, H, slash, H, dash in low, dash in low, slash, heavy, and it just, it gets super obnoxious. If you block the overhead, just start mashing, because he can't chain back into slash, like he normally can in the regular stance. He can't chain back in the slash, he can't chain to his punches. Once he does that heavy slash, he is done. So after that, mash and it will beat all of his options except for a few. And the few that it doesn't beat, those lose to not mashing. So you're turning this like guessing game of a million options into a 50-50 by just simply looking for that overhead and then turning it into a game of am I gonna mash or am I not gonna mash? Just like I said in the soul guide, DPs are throwable on wake up, so if you think a Leo is going to DP, just throw them on their wake up. And if you do plan to block a DP, just remember that they can roam and cancel it on block, but they cannot roam and cancel it on whip. So what you can do is you can stand next to them like you're going to pressure them and then just back dash away or space yourself in a way that their DP whiffs, and then that way you get a full combo punish. If you do see a situation where Leo is in back turn stance and you get an opportunity to jump out of his pressure or something like that, I think it's a good idea to jump at Leo and do a chicken guard. So a chicken guard is where you jump at the opponent, but you're holding block the entire time. This way your character's momentum is going towards Leo, but you're blocking. The reason why you should do this is because a lot of times when Leo see you jumping at them and they're in back turn, a lot of times they'll counter because they think that you're going to do a jump in. But instead, you're not going to do anything, and then when his counter whiffs, you'll punish it on the tail end, because it is vulnerable on the tail end, and you'll get a counter hit punish. Now, if the Leo instead does an H or a P to anti-air you, well, you're blocking, so you're just going to block it. So you just jump at him and block, and then you look for the counter. If he does it, you punish it. If he doesn't, then you do nothing. And if you do end up landing near him, then just input a throw. If he counters, you'll throw him out of the, out of the counter. And if he does any one of his attacks, most of them will lose. The, the heavy option is airborne, but still I think that the strategy has a high success rate, so you should definitely try it out. Pay attention to his distance from you when he's in back turn. If he isn't in range for the K, then the overhead is definitely coming. After blocking the slash in back turn, you know for sure that the overhead is coming. If Leo is in his guard point, remember that he's vulnerable to lows, and also if you do hit the guard point, you can Roman cancel it. Now it's important to note that the Roman cancel does not beat the guard point, but if Leo blocks your attack and then he tries to do the follow-up attack to punish it, if you Roman cancel it, it will hit him out of the startup of the follow-up attack and pop him up for a combo. And most Leos will press a button the moment that you actually trigger the counter. So, if you see a Leo in guard point and you have meter and you want to do something funny to him, intentionally hit it and then Roman cancel. And as soon as he presses a button, he'll get popped up for a full combo. Be careful about Leo's fireballs. Leo, after throwing that fireball, actually has a lot more recovery than you think he does. And also, he's put in a counter hit state as well. So definitely take full advantage of that. Alright guys, so I feel like we've covered pretty much everything about the character that you need to know to get the basics and start winning with the king. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to leave you guys some combos and setups that you can copy for yourself. I'm going to have Leo come out here himself and demonstrate for you guys. Hey Leo, go ahead and get out here and show him how it's done, bro. Leo? The hell is he? Hey Faust, go ahead and help me out, bro.
and just say hello to me Two more they name fool, they come to the stone We go home, but I'm a terrible liar Forgive me, that's not the art of prayer Dream of heaven. Thought the dream of heaven never lasts very long. The running flash and dark sky is made my rule.